Within SQL, we can use joins to combine data from two or more database tables. And those tables are joined based on some relationship between them. There's got to be a relationship there. Now, as a little bit more background as to why we need joins, oftentimes the data in our database is scattered across multiple tables. And when we query that data to answer some business question, oftentimes we need data from more than one table. And joins help to bring that data together across multiple tables. Now, there's four joins we're going to talk about. An inner join, left join, right join, and full join. And I'm going to talk about them at a high level first, and then we'll drill down into more detail with an example. But an inner join is going to return matching records between the two tables. When we join them together, we just bring in the overlap. With a left join, it's going to return the left table, as we'd call it, and matches from the right, where they overlap. And then with the right join, it's going to be the reverse of that. It returns the right table and matches from the left. And with the full join, it's going to bring everything from both of the tables. So let's look at these joins in more detail using this example. So let's say we work at a doctor's office and we track patients and their appointments. And we've got an appointments table where we have an appointment ID, which is the primary key, and a patient ID, so we know who the appointment was for, along with the date of the appointment and the type, whether it was planned or an emergency. And then we have a table with patient's data in it. Our patient ID is the primary key, and then we've got the name, city, and state for that patient. Now, what we've got to know to join this data together is the relationship between them. In this case, it's the patient ID. It's the primary key in the patient's table and the foreign key in the appointment's table. And maybe what we want to do is join this data together so we have the appointment ID and the list of appointments from the appointments table, and the name and city of the patient from the patient's table. We just want data from those three fields. So before we walk through the joins, though, it would be helpful to know the differences in patient ID between these two tables. So in the appointments table, notice how for one of the appointments, the patient ID is null. It's not there. It's missing. And then for the patient's table, we have patient 203 that does not have an appointment in the appointments table. That knowledge is going to be important as we try out these joins. So we'll start with the inner join, which is going to return matching records, the overlap between them. And so what we're going to see is we're going to get the appointment ID, the name, and the city, where we have overlap in the patient ID. There's got to be overlap. That's why you don't see data for the appointment where the patient ID is null or when the patient ID is 203 in the patient's table. They're not overlapping there in that relationship. Now, with the left table or left joint, it's going to be a little different. It's going to return the left table and matches from the right. So in this case, when the patient ID is null, even though it doesn't exist in the patient's table, we're going to still include it because we're pulling everything from the left table. It's a left joint. And in the patient's table, it's just what's matching, though. We're not going to pull data for patient 203. Notice, though, this is a left join, right? When we pull in appointment 3482, the name in the city is going to be null because we don't have a null patient ID in the patient's table. We don't have data to pull in for that. Now, with the right join, it's going to be the opposite of the left. So we return everything from the right and matches from the left. And so we get everything from the patient's table, including for patient ID 203. But in the left, we just get where the overlap is. So notice how in our results... We see information for patient 203, Ophelia Paxton, and Madison, but the appointment ID is null because we don't have an appointment ID for that patient. And a full join is going to return everything from both tables, the left and the right. So you get where the patient ID is null in the patient's table and where the patient ID is 203 in the patient's table. And just notice again at the results, we have some null values or blank values, and we don't have data to pull in. Now that we've looked at the joins conceptually, let's review how to write these actually in SQL. So here's the syntax. We're going to say select the columns we're interested in from the left table, which in our case was appointments, and then join it with the right table, patients, and then we're going to fill in that blank with inner 
left, right, or full outer join. And then we're going to say we're, we're going to join it on the common key between them. In our case, it was the patient ID. So here's what this looks like for us. We're going to say select the fields. But what's important here to note, though, is with each of the fields, we're identifying the table that they're coming from. So appointments.appointment ID. It's coming from the appointments table. Patients.name and patients.city. And then we'll say from the appointments table, that's our left table. And let's try inner join with patients and perform the join on or using this key that's common between them, appointments.patientID and patients.patientID. And then we can change inner join to left join, right join, or full outer join. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the subscribe button. And if you're interested in a SQL cheat sheet, you can find one over at codybaldwin.com.